Welcome to my webinar. I will just uh, start with it. So you should consider this as a follow-up to my web webinar uh, about, uh, well, my VLAN theory talk webinar, which I did back in February 2021, so two years ago. Um, there's a recording, a recording. And uh, I will do a partial repeat of what I uh, explained there. Um, and just uh, talk about some terminology and try to explain again how uh, 802.1Q VLAN tagging works. So first thing that we should uh, talk about, of course, is uh, why do we even want to bother with VLANs? So maybe because we have a big uh, switch, uh, but actually we have feel the need to have uh, sm um, more multiple small ones, then we can uh, split a, a single physical switch into multiple virtual uh, switches. Um, also doing this over several physical switches which might be in different buildings or different levels of a uh, uh, of some building some uh, examples that you might think of uh, segregating your guest uh, ssids from uh, the other wireless net networks or your other networks in general in your other local area networks or segregate your management uh, networks from other uh, local at, um, area networks, um, or maybe even something like a department network, uh, splitting that up. Well, a lot of terminology that uh, that comes up. And uh, I uh, I will mention the, the ones that are in bold. The other ones I will just uh, leave. Um, and by the way, I did uh, put some uh, PDFs in the handout part. So you can download two PDFs. You can download this PDF, which uh, shows a little bit more than the, uh, the uh, sheets, sheets that I'm showing, uh, but also my uh, theory talk, uh, which will uh, talk about all the um, different uh, terminology. So. Just to start off, what uh, what's tagged, what's untagged. So tagged and untagged, it's like uh, putting a uh, uh, a routing label or some label on a on a box or an envelope or whatever, or on a baggage tag like you have for uh, your uh, luggage when you're traveling. Only it will be a little bit different. Uh, what's in it. So instead of uh, some FIA stuff, you will have your uh, VLAN ID uh, mentioned uh, there somewhere. So if you're talking about tagging, you're putting the tag up. If you're talking about uh, untagging, you remove the, the, the tag or don't have it tagged. Next thing we need to talk about is ingress and egress. So ingress is when a packet comes into uh, a device, mostly switches. Um, when a packet is uh, is untagged, then your port VLAN ID will be the tag that will be put on. And for switches, it's important to note that uh, everything inside the switch is always tagged. By default, it will be VLAN ID one, but uh, you can change the port VLAN ID. So if it's already tagged and it is allowed to come in with that tag, it will not change any tags. And if it needs to be tagged, but it has no tag, then yeah, well, it will not be allowed to go in. Egress, that's it's for exiting packets. 
it's the same uh, thing more or less. Uh, you have it either that it is inside the switch tagged and then outside the switch going out, it's still tagged or it can be uh, untagged, so the tag will be stripped. And again, it is assuming that it is allowed. So if it has a VLAN 2, but only VLAN 1 is allowed to, to exit tagged, then, well, the packet will not leave, will not be allowed to leave. Next thing, allowed. So that's both for ingress and egress. It's allowed to ingress or egress forbidden. It is not allowed to do that. Um, in the cloud, we do not have uh, this setting, but if you look in the device itself, you will find that there are settings for this. So this is what you will see inside the, 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 the inside the switch on its uh, local uh, configuration. You can say that it is uh, accept, only accepts attacked or only accepts untacked or with ingress uh, uh, filtering, um, then it will only allow the VLANs that are uh, configured on that port. So if you do not have VLAN 2 configured on, on, on the port and ingress filtering is enabled, it will ju just drop the packets. So when ingress tagging is disabled, all frames, which with whatever type of VLAN tag they have, they will be allowed to enter the, uh, uh, the switch. Again, inside the switch, it is always stacked. And when it got, um, is stacked already, it will stay tagged. If it's not stacked, it, you will have the port VLAN ID tagged with. Outside the switch, you can have VLAN ID zero, and that's when it has priority bits. But as soon as it has a uh, enters the switch, it uh, will be re-tagged re from port VLAN ID. So internal to the switch, it will not have uh, VLAN zero. Then we have trunks. So the all ingress and egress packets are, are, are tagged. We have an ad, a, access or edge um, that is uh, in, internally there, of course, the tag with port VLAN ID, egress, uh, it will be uh, a single untagged VLAN only. And the hybrid will be a combination of the both. So by default, always port VLAN ID one. Um, and again, uh, I keep repeating, inside the switch, it is always tagged and which is so one by uh, being one. So back best, best uh, practices, uh, be careful not to exclude yourself from any device uh, by configuring, uh, changing the VLAN and not uh, having that, that other VLAN available because then uh, you will uh, have some problems or in, at least interesting times to recover from that. Um, one way to uh, keep that under control is keep VLAN 1 as a management VLAN. That will make life easier. Uh, keep, keep, uh, keep a port uh, on any device or any switch uh, with uh, port VLAN, the, the management VLAN intact so that you can always uh, plug in for local management. And again, because especially because we're talking about cloud stuff, the management VLAN must have access to the internet um, to be uh, to be managed. The other thing that is very important to not forget is that if you have any intact ports, the port VLAN ID on that port should be e equal to the VLAN ID that you have configured on that uh, for that port. 
so there are two places that you need uh, to uh, to configure this and this you should combine it with only one untagged VLAN report so now for the first uh, part of my uh, demonstration I will sw switch to uh, to another another thing let me see if I still have it gateways yes So I have uh, prepared a network which has uh, some devices uh, in it. Um, I have uh, some uh, some access points, two access points. I have a switch uh, in it. You can even see they're all online, and I also have a uh, gateway uh, gateway in it. Um, so I was I wanted to show this one. I have a gateway in it, which is somewhere in my network. And from the gateway, I can see that uh, I have some devices connected uh, to it. So my uh, switch and my APs are connected internally. Okay. So now first going to the interfaces. There's very little that you can do wrong with your gateway. My experience is that if anybody has any problems with uh, VLANs, uh, nine out of 10 cases, it will be in switch. And then in most cases, somebody messed up with port VLAN IDs. Anyway, for, um, for VLAN, VLAN stuff, we will find that in two places we will find it on the one. So we can have a uh, situation that on the one we have uh, to configure a VLAN. You can configure any VLAN number that you configure here is totally separated from the VLAN number that you um, will configure on the LAN side. So these are totally different. Now, for any interface that we will add on our gateway, don't care what kind of uh, thing, it is always a VLAN. And actually, I think that if I try to uh, to call this uh, VLAN one and configure it with some subnet, let me take a subnet that I'm sure that I'm not using anywhere. Um, I think this uh, this should uh, tell me that I have an error because although with this one, it is always untagged internally for the uh, device, this is VLAN one. So we may not know it, but this is VLAN one internally in the uh, device. So for a gateway on the outside, it's untagged, but internally it will, the untagged network will be uh, VLAN one. So back to adding a VLAN. So if I want to add a VLAN to, um, in this case, I already created it, but if, uh, if I want to create a VLAN, I can give it a name and stuff like that. So I already did this, so we can we'll cancel here. So it's even telling me that I doing a duplicate, but I can just configure it here. Then for a part that if I want to connect it with my VPNs, I can configure it here. Also, I can, can configure on which ports of the uh, gateway. My uh, VLAN, tagged VLAN, this will always be tagged outside, um, will be available. So I will just uh, apply this and have it done. And I can uh, can do this multiple times. So the first, when I do this, by default, the DHCP server is running. And if I don't do anything else, it will, 
give me any IP address. Oh, by the way, I think maybe it's better to, although 2.0 is a valid IP address in a, uh, in a subnet like this, maybe not su such a brilliant idea to use the network uh, IP address. So let me do, look at, do it like that. So uh, GCP will, will, will run and it will ad give you any IP address that is available uh, in the subnet. So from two to 254, um, unless I reserve some, some things, unless I fix them. And yeah, well, I will usually reduce this to a shorter value. So there's there, there are some stuff, stuff to do, but actually the only thing that you need to do if you want to configure a VLAN on a uh, on a one of our gateways is uh, do the uh, do the add add interface and then uh, enable it, give it the IP address and subnet, and select a uh, available VLAN and or create a VLAN and select it. So those are the most important things to do. And of course, having it available on at least one uh, uh, port also makes sense. There's very little you can do wrong here. So this is the easy, easy part. For the, let me see if I did all the, the stuff that I want to talk about. Oh yeah, there's one, uh, there's one more thing that uh, I think I need to, to address in this case. And that is the, uh, the outbound, uh, where are those rules? There are also uh, some some outbound rules that I need to, to configure in my my firewall settings uh, of my ESG. Oh yes, um, gateway firewall. So if you need if if you don't configure anything, outbound bound rules are also the, your inter VLAN rules. By default, everything is enabled. So if you do this you will be allowed to route from any VLAN to any other VLAN. So if you want to uh, really keep uh, VLANs apart, you need to add the rules here to make sure that your VLANs are not allowed to route from one to the other. So that's uh, uh, by default, everything, everything goes. Okay, so now I mentioned everything I think that is important for uh, for this thing. So next, we go to the switches. So I have my switch. So for switches, configuration of switches, I have uh, several uh, places, several things that I can do. I can configure a template for a whole type a set of switches. And there I can, I can configure for all the same type of switches. I can configure uh, uh, the VLANs like, or, or in or everything, including the VLANs to roll out to all the switches of that type. But it's the same as, uh, as when I just go to the details of the switch and start to configure the stuff there. So in a summary, there are some important things. So maybe I should go show here. So I have this switch. You see port VLAN, untagged VLAN, 111111. There is sort of a ninth port. So they're not just these external ports. There's also the port to which the CPU of your switch is connected. By default, that is VLAN one. If you want to be able to reach this, um, if you change it to something else, 
then uh, you need to have that on your switch too. Um, I found that some people um, uh, change this and forget to uh, put the uh, the right other stuff um, um, correctly. So my my I would prefer to keep this to one. But if you if you ever change this, make sure that you have that uh, VLAN on some ports or maybe even all the ports of your switch too before you do so. And the next thing is make sure that if you have changed your management VLAN, you have a uh, router well with that uh, with that um, given subnet for that switch already available. So um, by default, all the ports are uh, on on VLAN one untagged. And I can just, uh, if I want to, I can just uh, add all the ports to also have uh, tagged, uh, be tagged on VLAN 2. Oh, I think, and then I always forget to to double double check. So, J, oh, well, I can also do it like this. And then check. Now, if I want to, I can put, can also do this. But in that case, I will have two, I have ports eight untagged twice. And that is not, there are some very specific situations where you need that. But in general, it is a bad practice to have it untagged twice. So I'm not going, even going to do that. I will just keep it like like this. Um, and then I can press apply. Remember that uh, it takes a little while for uh, for the device to to update these uh, these things. Um, it did not update this part, but if I refresh the page, it is I'm pretty sure that I will see that it's uh, it's still updating uh, the page. I will probably need to click a few times. So. It's out of date because I uh, didn't configure. So here, my port eight is uh, does not have uh, VLAN eight or the the VLAN two or VLAN three, uh, and also I didn't configure VLAN three yet. So if I ever should change my uh, management VLAN to three, I will have two problems. First. My uplink port doesn't carry uh, VLAN 3 at all. And second, the other problem is that, well, I, well, I, or did I do that? Did I configure VLAN 3 uh, on uh, here? No, only VLAN 2. And the second thing is there will be no VLAN 3. So if I configure, VLAN 3 as the uh, management VLAN, my uh, switch will not be able to get until in, uh, uh, onto the internet. And actually, uh, if it was just about not having a VLAN 3, it would be very easy because I could just add the interface and say, I want to have uh, uh, VLAN 3 and give it some uh, IP subnet. But that will not help me in this case because I don't have on the switch after I upgrade updated it, the switch will still have the uh, port VLAN 3 missing. So the easy way in this case would be to just switch the ports and then it should come online again. And then I can fix uh, the settings. Stuff like this is the things are the things that happen most often as a problem. So this is what you need to be very careful with 
especially when you try to change management stuff. The other thing is, is that if people use static IP addresses, um, I prefer to have everything on DHCP so that I can can change VLANs. And it's not just for, for, for my switches and APs, but in general, I uh, I prefer to have everything um, on DCP and then because my gateway has uh, the feature, I can go to the was it? Um, I can I can just conf configure the uh, that a device with a specific um, IP address or the specific MAC address gets a specific IP address in uh, by this by the DHCP server. So I can I can configure it uh, here in this list. And then the devices will always have the same IP address, but if anything changes in a network, at least they will get an IP address. And then I can find out the IP address. Yes, with a small delay, I will find the IP address in the uh, DHCP lease uh, list. So anybody have any questions about configuring the VLANs in the switches. Oh yes, of course, the other part, the thing that I always forget. So say that I really want to, uh, to do something tagged. I will configure one of the ports that is not uh, not connected. I will configure port five to VLAN four and detect. And because I want to to uplink it, probably I will also configure it. Okay, and again here I typed it and then forget forgot to. Uh, oh, yeah, like this. I always forget to use that check, so I took it out here. And I put it there. Now, uh, in this case, I have two situations. It won't work because uh, I didn't configure VLAN four on my uh, my my gateway. So let me do that first. Um, detail and. I need to go to the configuration part for this. Interfaces, then add interface, VLAN 4, 10.0.4.1.24, VLAN 4, apply it. So it will take a little while. Now back to the configuration configuration of my switch. Now it's one thing that I always forget to do. So I conf oh I uh, I forgot to press apply here obviously. Too many applies for me. And deck check. VLAN 4, port 5 is intact. And the uplink port will be tagged. 
press apply. So now it shouldn't forget anymore. So my uplink port, VLAN 4, port 5, is also connected. And there's the, then there's the one thing that everybody forgets, including me. You need to go to ports. What you see here is that my port VLAN ID. So it has four here, but one here, and that is wrong. I need to rem remember to configure this. And in this case, I don't have any additional apply buttons. So don't forget to set your port VLAN ID for your untagged VLANs on a port. Now, if I connect anything to port five, it should get an AP IP address from uh, the router for VLAN four. Um, I have uh, two, 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 uh, two questions here. W one, uh, do I have support for extended VLANs? Um, I think you need to explain a little bit what you mean by uh, VLANs. Um, if it's about uh, what uh, I would call Q in Q, so VLANs inside VLANs inside VLANs. Uh, no, we do not have that in our switches. And the other thing is, is uh, if I do the untagged uh, VLAN, set it to four, why isn't it uh, changed automatically? So what you see what I did here is that I, um, I first, I removed uh, my untagged VLAN here. Um, let me click on it. Oh, wait, 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 I need to click here. I can have it like this. I can have it untagged both in VLAN 1 and in VLAN 5. So this is, this is not a uh, standard configuration, but it is a possible configuration. And in this case, which of the two would be your port VLAN ID? There might even be some situation that uh, you uh, want all the packets to go in on port uh, on VLAN five on on, uh, on VLAN four, and then if they go out, uh, come out from VLAN one. I don't think it's a particularly uh, sensible configuration, but at least it's a possible configuration and maybe some people will have use for it. So um, this is to make this uh, it um, have the maximum flexibility. There are some smart switches, which are a little bit more simple. And then as soon as you configure um, this one to, uh, to VLAN 4, it will be automatically removed as untagged from that one. But those switches also have another limitation, like they cannot have hybrid ports. Ports will be either uh, single VLAN untagged and have that same as port VLAN ID or, or be a trunk port and have everything tagged. So we, we can do hybrid stuff and it makes it a little bit more complicated. Um, to configure, but it gives a little bit more flexibility. Yeah, sometimes I also also think that uh, changing the port VLAN automatically is nice uh, to have. But uh, anyway, at the moment uh, it's uh, it's fixed, so you need to need to remember. In this case, I don't want to uh, to save the uh, one to eight here, so I will just ignore that uh, that warning. Then there's one more thing that what we have uh, in uh, in this. Let me see if I can find where we uh, where we put it. Wait. Okay, so that's the voice VLAN. 
you can do this uh, for all the switches in the uh, switch configuration here. But you can also do it for each uh, thing, and that's enable voice VLAN. Um, the voice VLAN ID, um, this is a special feature in the devices, which will allow devices from which have a specific MAC address to be tagged to the VLAN you selected. So um, select VLAN ID, say VLAN 22, that if anything that comes into that port has this MAC address or this MAC address or no, any of those MAC addresses will automatically be a uh, tagged with this VLAN. So even if you hear, um, yeah, I will proceed. If here VLAN 22 is not done on any port, it will tag it. In this case, um, what if you want to do use this, of course, at least at the minimum, you would want to have your uh, uplink port. Um, port 8 tagged for this, or it will not will not return your traffic. The other thing is, is that in this case, you will probably want for um, return traffic. So the tagged and untagged here is all about egress traffic, how it, how it behaves when it goes out. You will probably need to uh, Put your other ports where you might add your uh, voice VLAN devices to, which usually we have pre-configured this for um, for 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 um, IP phones, so MAC addresses of IP phones. But of course, um, you could abuse this for other types of devices. Um, the only thing is we only have one um, voice VLAN, one special VLAN. So it's either for your phones or for something else, and it will be on that uh, specific uh, VLAN. So now what happens is that all the traffic that comes in from any of these MAC addresses, and you can remove them and add other ones, from these MAC addresses will be automatically tagged to the VLAN, even though the port VLAN ID is different. And then when it goes out of the device, I configured it that anything that comes, goes out of the switch on those ports from VLAN 22 will be untagged. And then the, the phone will not even be aware uh, that uh, it was tagged on the backend. And you might, wa and you might want to do this to um, handle the specific traffic with additional priority. That said, uh, priority on a local network. Uh, usually there's not really a problem on with bandwidth on a local network. If you have any problems with uh, bandwidth, it's usually on your internet connection. So maybe it makes more sense to prioritize uh, the traffic from your, uh, uh, from your phones there and prioritize um, the, 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 the the traffic to and from the uh, voice over IP gateway stuff. So it's about voice VLANs. Um, about the, um, one thing back about the uh, port VLAN IDs. Um, well, I, I also, I'll apply this. Okay, so um, about the port VLAN IDs, about automatically configuration, Yes, for the smart switches, for the for 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 the simple switches, uh, this is the case. If you go into uh, um, if if those devices still have a CLI, or if they have a uh, advanced mode, in the advanced mode you will not find it, and you will need to do it manually. And that's the case uh, for any brand. Uh, um, it's for it for the for the for the for the simple switches. It will be done automatically. For the more advanced switches, in most cases, um, unless 
there they are specifically configured as a edge um, um, port um, the, um, and all our ports are hybrid unless they are specifically uh, configured as an edge port you will need to um, manually configure the port vlan id okay that is about uh, this part so there's one more part left and that's the access points and again with the access points it's much like the gateway or even uh, better than the gateway there's uh, very little that you can do uh, wrong there because with the access points it's just about uh, adding ssid so vlan 2 ssid um, i disabled it because i don't want it uh, to to appear in my network, uh, do some uh, some random uh, pshared key, and then you get here you get the default VLAN ID. It says default VLAN ID for a reason. I will get back to that uh, um, after this, but I can just do this, leave everything uh, else uh, as it is, and press apply and then this SSID will be rolled out to all the uh, APs uh, in, in my network. And it will just tag all the traffic uh, with this uh, VLAN ID. Again, if there are any issues here, nine out of 10 times, it is in a switch. So this is the, uh, is the very easy, uh, uh, part of con configuration uh, VLANs. Now, we do have some additional things that we could do. We could uh, use uh, WPA uh, 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 MyPSK, or we could use uh, WPA uh, en uh, Enterprise, any of those. Uh, and then if you use Enterprise, for instance, you can uh, do this click VLAN by radius. So by default, it will do the one that you have here, but you can all overrule the default with uh, by uh, having your radius uh, server um, also uh, telling about the, the VLAN, uh, giving the VLAN ID there. And for the my pre-shared key um, stuff, it's the same. If you create uh, my P PSK users, let me see where where I put it. Um, so if I my, my if I add a my PSK user, I can assign which. Uh, which VLAN they will, uh, that they either will have a VLAN by SSID, so the default VLAN, or I can configure it to get a specific VLAN, which is different from the one that they are allowed to connect to. So the default VLANs can be overruled. And again, remember that if you use any VLANs here, you need to have those VLANs uh, on your switch. And of course, you also need the, uh, the VLANs on your router. Um, I get some end users uh, complaining to me, asking about, uh, uh, so I configured VLAN too and nothing happened. And then I ask them about, did you put, uh, put any VLAN on your router? And then I get some reply clearly indicating that they, are, they don't know what I'm talking about. So be aware, you need, if, if you want VLANs to work, you need to have those configured on your router. And also be aware that not all your customers will be affair, aware of this need. Um, 
for the voice VLAN. I see somebody asked a question about that. Let me go back uh, to that. Um, so for the voice VLAN, go to details. For the voice VLAN, you have two things. You need to make sure that the return traffic, so this VLAN tab, this is about everything that goes out of your switch, that that needs to be go out. If it's on your VLAN, voice VLAN, it needs to go out untagged from the ports and be tagged on your uplink port. However, you do not change the port VLAN ID uh, um, here because this is this is the default uh, VLAN that uh, any device will get when they uh, go into the uh, switch. But the uh, voice voice VLAN configuration will overrule the uh, the port VLAN ID for the configured MAC addresses. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, let me see. Um, so I did this part. Yeah, for the for for the uh, APs, there's one thing uh, last thing that I think I want to uh, to mention. If you have uh, a guest VLAN, something like guest VLAN, don't forget to go to the advanced settings and enable layer two is isolation, so your uh, guests cannot uh, come com, uh, connect to each other directly. This is. Uh, and you may also want to do stuff like that uh, up, upstream in your uh, in your switches. Okay. Um, did I show everything? Yes. Okay, back to this. So uh, how do our, uh, what happens when you have uh, mesh enabled? Um, well, if you have mesh enabled, it will just carry the uh, VLAN tags. You don't know on, on your APs. So, you can, uh, there may be some limitations, but in practice, if you have uh, your um, your different, uh, um, if you have an, a single SSID on your uh, AP with, me with mesh on, but you have multiple VLANs on your network and all those VLANs are carried to your a AP, they will just be uh, bridged, including the VLAN tag to the, uh, to the other side, to the AP on the other side and the network on the other side. You might want to test this, but in practice, this is uh, quite easy to just uh, um, bridge uh, VLAN tags. Um, one thing that uh, I uh, noticed a lot, and that's a situation that uh, people say, yeah, but my PC gets an IP, but device, IP phone, AP, uh, it does not get an IP address. So we see that I see that happening with any device not uh, running Windows versus any device running Windows. By default, uh, Windows strips VLAN tags. So again, if I go back uh, to my configuration. Go back here. Um, uh, 
what I said with, uh, with, with the switches is that the best behavior, for, um, the best practice here is also always have that if you have a VLAN and you have a uh, untagged port, also have that as your port VLAN ID. Now say the situation here that uh, I left this or let me see um, where's the best. Ah, it's like like this. So I have my port VLAN ID on four. Go back to VLAN, and I, instead of having this one untagged, I put it as tagged. This situation. What happens? Um, so port v v VLAN ID is uh, for the for this um, for port five. It is four, so it will be tagged to VLAN four. Go to the DHCP server for VLAN four. Get a reply from VLAN four, and then when it arrives at this port, again this is about all the traffic going out of the switch it will be tagged and then we come back to this what happens so windows gets a vlan4 tagged packet it just strips the the tag now it doesn't have a tag and it sees a dhp reply it's happy it has an ip address linux however sent out a untagged packet it expects back a untagged packet however it gets a tagged packet it will not handle the tagged packet because it wants an untagged packet and it drops the packet and it will not get an ip address so again make sure that your untagged vlans and your port vlan ids for this sort of behavior they're the same so the only the only situation that it might be different is when you have something like a, uh, a voice uh, VLAN, but even there, the VLANs will be untagged for your voice VLAN going out. The other thing is when you do something wrong and you configure a, a wrong VLAN management VLAN, then uh, you might have uh, be disconnected from the cloud. So fix the VLAN and all router settings. Settings, maybe you need to add uh, the VLAN on your router with the TCP server. Maybe you need to set the VLAN uh, correctly on the uh, port to which your AP is connected. Okay. Um, so I think. I put accidentally put something in the uh, invitation about uh, SDE one gateways. Um, there will be a uh, webinar about SDE one gateways, but that will be on May 17th, so four weeks from now, about the EC320, 620, 610, and 620 that are coming. Uh, there's a link, and uh, well, after I just seen you will receive the uh, confirmation email, blah blah blah. Any other questions? Everybody fell asleep. Okay. So if you if you um, have any um, Questions in the future about this? You know where to find us? Support in ingeniousnetworks.eu. Um, oh, interesting question here. Is it a good practice to uh, put VLAN tags on PCs? No, I don't think so. Every time I do it, I forget I did it, and then I pr pl plug it into a network without VLAN tags, and then it does, suddenly doesn't work anymore. It is a good practice to have a untagged VLAN always on your network, unless 
for security reasons, you want to obscure that. In that case, maybe you want to do it a little bit different. Um, then, uh, um, so best back best practice would to be have to uh, to have your your normal devices except servers always use a intact uh, VLAN, not tagging them. Um, so the situation where I have uh, two uh, two VLANs uh, untagged. So um, this situation that I might have uh, two VLANs uh, untagged, like uh, what I have here, is because uh, I have my uh, voice VLAN, so I'm tagging all the traffic incoming to uh, VLAN 22 and being handled by the VLAN 22 router. But if I connect a normal PC, which like previous question is uh, just untagged, it will it will just go to the uh, normal port VLAN ID one or four port five port uh, being uh, VLAN four and be handled there. Um, and there are some other um, com complicated configurations that I had that. Uh, had multiple uh, untagged VLANs, but um, you, you want to avoid those uh, things if you can. So the only situation that you that you usually have uh, um, the same ports untagged are when you combine it with uh, a voice VLAN. Otherwise, you will just have one each port being in one untagged VLAN, and all the other uh, VLANs being tagged or not available. And the combination with having a uh, boat is usually on your uh, uplink ports. And uh, for on, on, sometimes on server ports, if you have uh, um, virtual servers or um, if, if, um, Virtual machines, which all are, um, which you put on different uh, uh, VLANs, then you will also have multiple tagged VLANs on the ports where you have the servers. Um, okay, B back to the voice VLANs. Um, of course, you can also have uh, your uh, IP phones uh, configured to do the VLAN tagging. But I think this uh, this function was created mostly because um, configuring that on every phone uh, is hard or harder. And now the only thing you need to do, you can leave the phones mostly in default and just plug them in, and they will automatically go to the to the correct uh, um, uh, network. So. This is just one of the the, the ways that uh, it could be done. Actually, if you have a voice a voice over IP uh, zip client on your phone, you might want to uh, do some tricks to uh, tag your voice VLAN to. Uh, to this this VLAN ID because your of course your zip client on your Windows computer or whatever you kind of computer that will not not be automatically uh, sent there. Um, 